Uh, we actually have back to back. We actually have back to back coconut videos. Just both of coconuts videos won this week. So yeah, this one uh, is talking about why do these two biggest licenses flop? We're probably be talking about Alien and Chucky. I don't think these are the biggest licenses. I think the biggest licenses are Resident Evil and Halloween. So we're, we're already starting off on a weird foot that I don't really agree with what you're saying here. Um, it's kind of weird. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Obviously, the biggest licenses are Halloween and Resident Evil. Alien is, despite how popular it is, not great it is. Um, it's kind of like did not does not retain its uh, popularity as as time has gone by. Um, Alien has not had. <laughs> Aliens was kind of the last good Alien movie. That sucks to say. Prometheus is okay. Covenant is okay. It's not like Halloween where they're literally still putting out films that are, are good. Like Halloween 2018 is arguably the best sequel to the original, and that came out obviously in 2018. Um, Halloween Kills is all right. Halloween Ends is uh, overhated, but still meh. Um, Alien 3 is good. It's okay to be wrong. I mean, you you said Space Billy was an exploit and you made night, so like, I don't know, your, your, your logic factoring is not the best. But like, you know, not very uh, Resident Evil obviously still putting out bangers every year. Third favorite game of all time for me, Resident Evil 4 make came out last year. So like, you know, it's not as prevalent. Like Alien hasn't had a really true, objectively good movie <laughs> in decades. So Yeah, it's I can see why that's not great. And also Chucky, it's the same thing. Chucky uh, at least Chucky has kind of fallen into that like Child's Way has fallen into that zone that Friday the 13th did where like bad is the point, right? And the show is the show is re reviewed well, but like Child's Play, the, like the last good film was like the second one, <laughs> like an objectively good. Um, so it's kind of in that same boat where like besides the show kind of cropping up and be like, hey, I I'm, I matter still. Um, it, it hasn't had an objectively good film in a while. The the remake was eh, eh, forgettable. Um, love Aubrey Plaza and anything though. Uh, <laughs> but like I can see why I don't I definitely don't agree with the, the, the biggest licenses so if that's like the core issue is that like why they're they're huge licenses I don't know why they failed it's like these these have not been like the IPs have not been prevalent period in a bit so yeah they are prevalent in pop culture and just in general but like in terms of like something actually like like some gourmet when it comes to entertainment not really Hey, heroes. Good to see you, friend. Hey, neighbor. Yeah, Prometheus was meh. I liked Covenant more, but it was still meh. It was still eh. Spikes. It's like Alien, 100,000 players spike. Chucky, 100,000 players spike. What do we get? 30,000 players. Mm -hmm. What? License killers are the most anticipated updates within Dead by Daylight, where players can feel the thrill of being hunted by their favorite horror icons within the video game. So I've listed every single license killer that's been added to the game since day one. Yeah, exactly. It's like besides just generally in pop culture, being able to recognize, oh, that's the alien from the alien movie and Chucky's the, the doll from Child's Play. Like in terms of like the last movie, you're like, wow, that was really good. Did you go see that? Like when was the last time you said that about a film from either the, like the a film from this franchise? Right. Since when? <laughs> since when? You didn't. So, like, you, you, you don't. So, yeah, they're not really the biggest IPs. From Michael Myers all the way up to Chucky. You can see the player count begin to rise as more and more licensed killers are added, all the way up to Nemesis and Pinhead. And that's where it begins to drop. Because they have, they have like, right, like I said, Red and Evil put out bangers almost every year. Very, very, like, recent. Very good franchise. Hellraiser put out a reboot uh, on Hulu. That was very good. It was very good. It was very, very good. So, like, they have, they have recent content that is good. Can't say that for... Can't say that for Sadako. Can't say that for The Ring. Um, Wesker I'm a little unsure about, because Wesker is obviously from the same franchise. But, yeah, it's like... I don't get it. In particular, with average player count. Since Sadako, Wesker, and now okay, Alien, about to say. and Chucky. So why is that? Well, I decided to hold a discussion with my stream to figure out just Well, why. Pyramid is kind of like the inverted. Like, Pyramid has the opposite effect where, like, 
Silent Hill is so... Uh, before they announced all this stuff uh, that is coming uh, soon, uh, peer, like, like si Konami wanted to do nothing with Silent Hill. Like, jack all nothing. So it was almost like a scarcity thing where it was so rare to see Silent Hill stuff that, like, seeing it was like, whoa! <laughs> you know? So kind of like the inverse of Chucky. So why is that? Well, I decided to hold a discussion with my stream to figure out just why that is. What do I think about DVD 1v1 players and comp in general? The difference between pub players? I think comp kills DVD. Part of the main issue with competitive is it starts making every game feel the same. That is true. Every single match is a tunneling thing. You'll f you start facing like only Blight, only Nurse, only Spirit. And with Chucky getting released on November 28th, that very same day, people were already getting sick of facing him. This is not normal. This is a hot homogenization of gameplay mechanics. And when everything starts feeling the same, what happens? The game gets boring. That's the problem. So when everyone just starts optimizing, 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 you start to lose what make, made Dead by Daylight fun in the first place. A sense of variety. Yeah, it's asym. The ability to just it's asymmetrical. The game is supposed to feel... It's not it's not supposed to be symmetrical by by the word asymmetrical. It's supposed to feel different almost every time. Obviously, that's not realistic. But like we were just talking we were talking about this earlier today. Like, ooh, how many huntresses do you run into that are always only running the Oops All Aura? Like Oops All Aura is not a bad build to run. There's no slowdown. It's going for fun shots. But if you face it all the darn time, it doesn't matter how good it is, you're gonna get bored of it. <laughs> you're gonna get tired of it. My, my 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 example is the Big Mac. I love the Big Mac. I love going to McDee's getting me a Big Mac. But if I had to eat a Big Mac every day, you better believe on day three, I'm like, can I have something else? Can I have something else, please? You start wanting something else because you like the variety is the spice of life. It doesn't matter how good the thing is. So yeah, there ain't. Kind of play how you want. Yeah, sometimes you like you face seven Weskers in a row, seven Blights in a row. Never get tired. Seven Chuckies. You in want a trade? Row. What, do you think you want to trade? Please trade. I, mean, I wish I had that feeling is, this, in I mean, my this chest. This is what my recent video is about. They, the killers, they like, the more you nerf killer, the more they start tunneling. Lurking Mars? The more they harder, 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 harder. I harder? Whoa, whoa, what? I was, I stopped, I zoned out. Why is he saying harder, harder, harder? Ayo? What's happening? What kind of, what kind of conversation are we having? Huh? What? <laughs> Hello? Survivor, all survivors need to die. I never win if I don't get four kills. Okay. Now imagine that. But like you balance the game around that mentality, every single game is just f boring. Uh, it's like it's not healthy for the game. It's something that doesn't is not really seen explicitly. It's not really written on paper. No one really tells them. They could just do two game modes. They could. People would still play try hard and casual. That's probably the number one issue. It would just be homogenization again. Well, it, I always say this is like there will be a certain community that ha that wants to only play rank just to show off their 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 rank or rewards they they get from it that would leave casual so it's still a net gain but by how much is like the question right matches have been miserable night play the ptp play the ptp the ptp 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 mad ratchet says my hearts are still going to just play casual modes just to get their youtube or TikTok means more play. chase but if, if every chase plays the exact same almost is it really Variety? Like, I know it's a break from the slowdown, but if it's the exact same as the last match you had Aura, then the chases are playing almost the exact same. There was one of y'alls I faced the other day, and it was your Aura Huntress. It was Darth? I believe it was Darth. I faced one of y'alls Huntresses the other day, and it was, it was Aura Huntress, and you were really good, but you were the exact same as the last Aura Huntress I faced. In terms of of player expression, I could have confused the two of you. And I could have confused you with the third, like the third furthest back or Huntress that I face. Because the, the, the play, everything's the same. Like maybe we got a different map, but like the shots are still going to happen at relatively the same times at the same part of, parts of the loop because I you're going to go be going for similar shots with that aura reading up. You know? Don't know how they could, but like, it, you, you, I, expand your brain. I'm not saying it has zero counterplay or low amount of counterplay. I'm saying the counter, like, including the plays they're going for and your counterplay are the exact same every single time. They're the exact same every single time. 
the the last Ori Reading Huntress match I have is the same as the last Ori Reading Huntress match I had to the next Ori Reading Huntress match I had to the next Ori Reading Huntress match I had. It doesn't matter if I'm counterplaying it or or they're hitting on me or I'm hitting on them. Like the matches are the same. The same things happen match to match to match to match. So it doesn't matter if it's fun. I get bored of it over time because the game play, the games are playing the same. No, we're not we're not talking okay. We're not this is going completely over. This is going you're focusing on like, well, it's not slowdown. Well, it's not it's it's not wind up. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about repetition. The thing itself in a vacuum. We're not talking about, well, I prefer it or I don't prefer it. That's not part of the conversation. I'm talking about in a vacuum, this thing happening over and over and over, almost the exact same way, will wear out its welcome. Will, even though uh, the first time it ever happened, probably fun. Second time it ever happened, probably fun. Third time it probably happened, probably fun. Now I see an order reading Huntress and I just kind of like, oh, well, somebody got hooked across the map. Orbital's probably coming, and I just play the same way every single time. Orbital's probably coming. Okay, I'm going to move. I'm, I'm going to hide behind something. Is it different to the last match? Perhaps, yeah. But, like, it's the exact same as the last War Reading Huntress I faced, and the exact same as the last War Reading Huntress before that, and the one before that, and the one before that, and the one before that. So every match I play against this person is the same. So, Yeah. Okay, this is this is just going over your head. I, we're not having the same conversation. You're like, no, but I prefer it. I pre that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about it in comparison to something else. We're talking about like this thing wears out its welcome because it happens a lot, and it happens almost the exact same way every single time. So it, I find things less fun when it's over and over and over and over. Yeah, like I, you could play a song on repeat that you like a lot the first time you find it. That's a great example, Stiggy. Like, and you will play it for like the first day or the second day or the third day on repeat a lot. But eventually you start getting tired of hearing that song and you can't go back and listen to it on repeat the same way as you were first into it. And that's what I'm talking about. Like, that's what I'm talking about is that like it wears it out over time. And I think we're, I'm definitely at that point. Not only that that like specific example, but a lot of stuff in Dead by Daylight is that even when things aren't slowed out, they're not the sweat. They're not the, they're not the turbo, uh, they're not the turbo sweaty guy. Like a lot of the alternatives are also the exact same, the exact same. So even if you consider it fun, like it's the same, like uh, what I would consider actually different, like, like, uh, like uh, honestly, a lot of, a lot of the cool Weskers that exist out there that I never run into, which puts me off. I'm going to run, like, Shadowborn into, like, like, they always got to have Shadowborn. You know them. They always got to have Shadowborn. And then they're running some, like, I saw somebody the other day, forget who it was, but they were running, like, they were doing what I would like, I was liking to do, which was, like, Furtive Chase, Friends Till the End, and then something else. And it was, like, actually unique and different. Like, the experience was actually, like, odd and different. And it was, like, a surprise, right? Like, that is actually, like, variety. Dark Devo? It might have been Dark Devo. I actually don't remember, but it was probably Dark Devo. That would make sense with that build. But, like, it was actually interesting. I thought it was cool. But, like, usually the alternatives to being sweaty are also the same, right? How many Blights do you run into that are like, oh, I don't know, I'm running, a, like, a Enduring Shadowboard. Or the, or the dips that who are, like, you know, a little tuned into the Blight community who are like, okay, I'm only running Barbecue and Shadowborn, but because of that, I'm going to play harder. <laughs> you know, I'm going to tunnel at, like, five gens. Like, even the alternative to fun gets samey after a while, right? Hey, Tyre, it's good to see you. Hope you're doing well today, friend. But like, that's like... It's not truly variety if even the alternative to slow down and tryharding is, like, the same playstyle every single time. I, I don't get excited at Scratch Mirror Myers anymore. Another perfect example. I don't give a shit about facing, facing a Scratch Mirror Myers. I don't care if that's, like, no slowdown. He's running, like, pl like play through food and weird stuff like that. I don't care anymore. Because I have faced it so many times. Oh, whoa, look, map offering to indoor map. Oh, it's a Myers. Like, it's been, I've, it's, I faced it a million times, you know? Like, it, it, the gameplay is going to be the exact same. He's going to be behind a wall. I'm going to show up and I'm going to get hit. The best way to play around it is like go into wide hallways and just kind of be extra frosty 
Uh, <laughs> like, stay healed up so he can't just surprise hit you. Be watchful for the fact that he is, you know, probably proxy camping the hook through the wall with his wall hacks. You know, it's like, it's the same game every single time. Like, it was cool and scary the first handful of times because I didn't know what to expect. Now that I know what to expect, it's the same game every single time. Every single time. It's the same game every single match. So it doesn't matter if it's like a cool gimmick that's not technically sweaty. It's not meta. It's just like it's the same game. It, the what that Scratch Mirror Myers match that Myers is the same as the last Myers I faced with Scratch Mirror and the last Myers I faced with Scratch Mirror. The plays are almost the exact same. So it feels like the same game. It is not asymmetrical at that point anymore. It is the same match over and over and over and over, just a little bit spaced out. So, yeah, that sense of not knowing what happened to match is important, and I feel like the game has lost that a lot. It has lost that a lot. Oops. Exactly. That wouldn't change anything. Everyone says that as a solution, but it's... That's why these add-on passes and stuff that they're doing, even to characters that don't necessarily need them too badly, are important. Because they switch up the flow of gameplay. Right? There are some things that are retain their fun. I think Billy, Billy Day, perfect example of the Billy changes. Like, low pro, very firm and good place in his kit. Engravings, even though they changed the, the rarity and the way they work. Well, not, they didn't change the way it worked, but they moved up the rarity and they absolved the other one to something else. Um... Like, they were like, okay, well, those add-ons are good for Billy. Billy enjoys those. Toon Carver kept that as well. Moved his rarity. Like, these are good add-ons. These consistently do good things for this character. They're fun to play with uh, as and against. Keep them. But let's add some stuff with this overdrive stuff. Let's add some hit cooldown. Let's give him the mangled hemorrhage add-on that he never had that most of the roster has. Like, just adding new stuff and new things to do keeps things fresh. And it's really, really nice. So, yeah. Really going to do nothing. <laughs> I think the problem with the mindset of the community is everyone wants every game to be fair and equal all the time. But the problem when in this asymmetrical game is when you make everything fair and equal, every single match feels the same. Everyone feels like they need to play the same killer all the f***ing time, right? What needs to be accepted probably in dbd is the fact that maybe there needs to be a little bit of inequality in the in the in the matchmaking system maybe the matches do need to suck for like either new players or veterans when everything's all fair people say it's boring there's no ambition you have some of the biggest updates released in the entire history of the community okay these these updates should be popping off we should be having like a hundred thousand player spikes i don't think there's any i don't think the balance thing has anything to do with like characters being released though this is just the state of the game in general i don't think this is that i don't know i don't think it's maybe he's getting to it but like i i don't see the connection initially alien hundred thousand players spike chucky hundred thousand players spike what do we get thirty thousand players what that doesn't make sense so in reality what we may need to do is we might need to accept the fact yes it sucks that solo key players probably have games and yes it probably sucks that new players have games but like if you're new it's gonna fucking suck always it's always gonna suck you play apex counter strikes like i'm getting enrolled all the time there's no way right i don't know what i'm doing maybe we shouldn't be worrying so much about the equality of our games and balance of our games and more so on our core gameplay experience i don't know people are used to playing games designed to make the player win pb is not like that it's pvp based they do have an incredible job at balance but in the end you just need to get good and there'll always be someone who do better than you but the, the problem is, is, is with balance, is, is balance fun? When we design a game, an asymmetrical game, we, we say Dead by Daylight is balanced. Are you having fun? Yeah, most of my games, yeah. I think there's a difference between, I don't think this is intrinsically related. Things can be balanced and fun. I think Billy, in most cases, the new Billy, in most cases, is like, fair to face. I never felt like I got cheated today by a Billy. His, I, I never felt like I got cheated today by a Billy. Like, once. And he is way stronger. And they balanced him from being, uh, not weak, necessarily, but, like, for the amount of effort, for the amount of skill system that you had to climb, not worth it at all. <laughs> not worth it at all. But, like... I don't know, like... 
I felt I like I, there, like I, I don't know what else to say. Like new Billy, perfect example. I would play against him, and I didn't feel like unfairly cheated. I didn't feel like I was having a bad time. Also took out for you get played, yeah, because new Billy is way stronger, but he, you still gotta hit your curves. You still have. I still have to dissipate when you're gonna overdrive, so I can um, you know so what? I can dodge. Hey, Faith, it's good to see you. So I can avoid the dot. So I can avoid your your extra speed. He has to time when his he's about to get his overdrive, so he has to account for that as well. We're like doing this little dance, right? He he got more balanced in a way that was more fun for the game and more interactive. And I think the key word is interactivity. You can balance things. You just have to make them interactive. Balancing Sadako to remove interactivity from the game is dog and why I and a lot of people hate that character on both sides. You didn't make her stronger in a way that encouraged more gameplay. You you took away gameplay. You said the Sadako that used to have to like really try to condemn people just does it now just by mashing teleport. That that's not interactivity. That's boring. There, there, you have taken away gameplay and made the things less interactive, but they're stronger. Things are more balanced, right? Because a weak character is now no longer weak, but you took away interactivity, so nobody liked it. Besides people that played Sadako and enjoyed Sadako, so there go, there go they enjoy it on the survivor side as well because they like the character. <laughs> like, that makes sense. That makes sense. That's why the Billy feels fine and they don't, is because... There's a lot of interactivity happening, even though it's a very strong buff, that probably puts him in the A tier. There's a lot of interactivity going on between the two sides, so there's more gameplay happening, which makes sense. That's why that's why uh, the, the, the Blighted Tag does not give you that feeling. New Blighted Tag does not give you that feeling, because the guy is just bouncing up against the wall, missing you like 30 times, but he can just keep bouncing until he eventually hits you. You have taken away interactivity with Blight. Blight, it's fun to chase with. Blight, when he's not laggy or, uh, uh, you know, just abusing old Alkering or something, is fun to chase with. But new Eerie Tag is it doesn't matter if you outplay him, he's just going to bounce three more times and hit you anyway. You know? Yeah, it's like glorified Chucky. It's just you scamper under the pallet and hit you anyway. It doesn't matter if you outplayed him, scamper. It doesn't matter if you outplayed you, three more bounces and you're done. Right? So you took away the interactivity. That's the problem. I think, like, the, the, the fact that people enjoy facing Blight so much is a testament to that. He's the second strongest character in the game, but a lot of people will self-report in Dead by Daylight that they like facing Blights because there's interactivity there. Despite being a top three character, it's all about the interactivity. It's not that balance is inherently not fun. It's just if you balance things in a way that takes away gameplay, takes away us playing with each other, then we start having a bad time. Because we're no longer playing the game. We're being subjected, like we were talking about in a different view, subjected to somebody else's single player experience more and more. Look at you, Night Mains. Is there a lot of you here? Like, it's just, that's not, that's not gameplay. As long as there's gameplay, people will mostly be fine with something being OP and stupid. Just because it's like, it's fun to dodge something that's like... Remember that Wesker the other day? I was trying to go for like, like, the car tax? Like, like the hug tax on the car? I was like... I was I stood there and like, you can... I'm gonna let you try to hit this. Like, I was literally willingly throwing the game because I wanted him to hit something cool. And I was having so much fun. I was like, hey, I'm gonna let you get this. Because, <laughs> like, if you can hit it, that's really hard. I, I want to see you slide down this car and smack me. <laughs> like, you know, like, winning was not an objective in my brain anymore because I just wanted to see something cool happen. Like, some people be like, it's not balanced that he can hunt tech or he can do that with his power. You know, like, I know that balance is an activity. So I was, I was down. It, it would be cool. That's what people care about. They just want to have input. Here's here's the difference. Here's the difference. I'm, these are gonna be long reacts today. I'm I'm so sorry. All right, all right. It's like the third person who's asked. You guys, not, we record reacts every single Tuesday. If you did not know, every single Tuesday, about three or four hours into stream, we switch over. We do React Andy to con popular DVD content. That's how that's how that stuff gets up on the YouTube. We record it live. You guys ever play Foursquare in, in in school? When you were young, when you were kids, you play Foursquare. Had to bounce the ball back and forth. If it like hits inside your square, it's like, oh, that's bad. So there is a certain way that like Foursquare is designed a very, very specific way. 
It's not four squares, right? Four squares was a sh yeah, squ four squares was great. Balance in terms of like quote unquote balance, we're talking about like a re really rudimentary game, right? In terms of balance, behavior likes to do this thing when it comes to quote unquote balance. Unfun balance. Oh, why is this? Oh, because it's the background. In terms of of unfun balance, what they would do. This is like, for example, like Skull Merchant, uh, old, especially Old Skull Merchant, Old Skull Merchant, Old Legion, um, stuff like that. If you were, say, here, let's see, we'll be the, I'm the red guy and we'll have a blue guy. If they wanted the game to be more balanced, right? A lot of what behavior will do, which I think is just a massive massive uh, oversight is they would just kind of just go over to this this little square here and they were just like okay well this this needs to be more balanced so this killer is going to stay relatively the same but we're going to give it some sort of power that screws over the survivors and has very little if any counterplay so now we're going to take your side of the square and we're going to shrink it to this <laughs> that that is the way behavior designs so many of their killers that is the way behavior balances so many killers which is why it feels like because yeah, of course the guy in the butt in the smallest square is gonna have a terrible time. That's not balance. That's not how that works. <laughs> like that, of course, is gonna feel bad, right? That's gonna feel terrible. But you know, that's just that's just not fun design. Because you want to be able to play the game like this. You want to be able to like go back and forth and be you know the realistically as much as possible the base man the best man can win but obviously the best man's not going to win if he's dealing with that tiny of a box like he's going to be he's going it's not going to happen so that that it's not that balance is bad it's just obviously if you balance like that it's going to feel inherently terrible balance the way that encourages them to throw back and forth together and actually play with each other don't make his box so small that he doesn't want to play the game <sighs> so stupid Balance is not fun. No? Okay. If balance is not fun, what what do we what, what what should we do? We should make the game unbalanced. And it's like who cares if, if solo queues are, are crying and who cares if new players are crying? We don't want our game to die, right? <laughs> that's obviously not the thing we want. There's this obsession to try to be the best. Well, the best well that's game. that's what that's what that's what partially killed TCM was they were like, No, it's a party game, we don't care. So things Things that were not fun and unbalanced that were happening at the expense of other players made them leave the game. So, no, that would not fix things. That would make things worse. We've watched that kill a different ASIM. So, no. That, no. <laughs> the answer is no. Higher universe and, like, I'm the best player in the game. Look at me. I'm the best Huntress. I'm the best Billy. I'm the best survivor. And everyone's trying to, like, outskill each other. Trying to, like, optimize, optimize, optimize. And when the, the devs are like, okay, we're going to fix the broken shit. I'm going to make it so that tunneling, camping, not viable as much. Slugging, not viable as much. Well, every game feels the same. So, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of like a toxic. It just matters if the activity that you're doing is fun. That's what matters. A game can be as sweaty as possible. But as long as it's fun to do that, it doesn't matter. Why do you think I stuck with Billy for so long? Until the maps and, and, and bad collision started getting to me. But, like, Billy was one of the hardest experiences I, I, I've had in Dead by Daylight. Is learning and getting better and mating that character and getting good with him. But it was because, like, the things I was doing, the curves, the 360s, the S-curves, like, that stuff was fun. It was entertaining. It doesn't matter that it was, like, optimizing the character, sweating on the character. It was fun. And most people that I faced, or not most, but oh, I think most, I think most people enjoyed, you know, everybody's like, oh, Billy, wow, you know, like, it's worth it. If the activity you are actually doing is fun, it is worth it. It just has to be that the activity that you're doing is fun. It doesn't matter how sweaty or optimized it gets. It has to, it's just, is it fun to optimize the thing? That's, that's the difference. Unsustainable culture that we probably need to do a 180 on. I grew up with fighting games. Same. It may be a different genre, but a person I watch who is very knowledgeable in them said this once. A fighting game that is perfectly balanced would be terrible. Mm. Every oh, character would dude, feel yeah. the same and so would the matches. Maximilian dude said. Okay. Well, there we yeah, go. you follow him right now. I that mean, guy's amazing. The developers don't want to do this it, an ego problem. It's like everyone needs to be fair and it all needs to be balanced. I want to make sure that every single person has fun. Well, by making sure that 
quote unquote, everyone has fun by your standards. Nobody Jesus, has fun. Sure the killer, That's smile. not right. That's not true. Like, I mean, look at what, what, look at your community. What are they saying? People are complaining. That's still, that this is boring. Look, look around you. You have a huge ego problem. I've been saying this in almost every single video I've been posting. It is ego over here. I love him like smacking the table. Look, this is very subtle. I love him smacking the table and you can see the chat subtly moving. <laughs> like the zoom in that he did in the chat is subtly moving as he does. It's very it funny. Ego overheat doesn't matter. It is something that comes into play like never. Now, that being said, I've said this before. The reason overheat was an issue is not because you did overheat a lot, but you made decisions based off of getting close to overheat. That was the problem. You didn't want to overheat, so you'd make suboptimal decisions to avoid a penalty that shouldn't be there. That is what really happened. That is short-sightedness. That's not including the whole picture. Brand hey, Varus. How's it going? How do you hear me? Is it, like, a good mechanic? Does it do anything useful? No, not really. Uh, it, it could leave, but that's not the way that this works. People don't put something out there and, like, try it and see that, like, it's meh, it's okay, and they, like, just remove it. Like, a lot of time and effort goes into that kind of thing. What is much more likely is to see sort of an improvement over time, which is kind of what's already happened. We put so much time into this. Well, no that's deal. what happened, but it took three, almost four years to do it. Is turn overheat into a positive. Turn overheat into a buff state. Which is smart. Which is really, really smart. But the fact that it took four years to do that and a lot of stubbornness to admit it was bad, that's the problem. Waste if we didn't use this feature. Even if... A lot of people hate it. We'll hurt someone on the dev's team's feelings. So the developer's feelings are more important it's not a bad mechanic than the health now. of your community. But using it specifically as a nerf is terrible. Oh, no, that's not good. The health of, of your game is more important than your god feelings. <laughs> I hate to be that guy, and I hate to sound like the, the guy that is really fucking rude. But someone's got to say it. Make DB OP so every player stays at the same level, so there is no need to optimize. That's what we had before in the past. The old developers didn't care about balance because every single season there's a rank reset. The people that want to face yeah, OP some shit push rank one really early. The people that don't want to face OP shit don't push rank and uh, they stay at mid rank. That's when we had streamers who would disconnect to stay within green and yellow rank just so that they could roll killers and look good on YouTube videos and stuff. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Woody Pyramid Head player gets flashlight saved 40 times. Or if I win. Woody Pyramid Head player tunnels me out at five gens, then shoots my dog. <laughs> uh, that, those were, those were Not Sparky, times. dude. I've been wasn't there. That, that happens. It was an accident. It wasn't good for quote unquote new players. It was a horse games. accident, okay? It wasn't bad. It was good for the majority of the community. Just don't drive Ultimately, too fast in the village This is, this zone, is a okay? hard lesson to learn. Inequality in experience is seen as a bad thing. Ah, uh, solo queue is kind of shitty. When you're new to the game, it's kind of shitty. I don't know, the veterans, I don't know, they're facing the same survivors over and over again. It's kind of shitty. A long time ago, I said, like, F the, the new players, if they just so happen to get, like, a swift. F the veterans. You get what you get, you don't get upset. We're going to cater to the middle of the game where the majority of the players are, the casual players who are not, like, super sweaty. Right now, the current system makes it so that all the games feel the same. It's kind of boring. You're facing the same killer and over again. So I was like, I kind of need that inequality to, to have that homeostasis of fun. One of the main goals for the game design team is to explore new ways that we can keep the player experience fresh and fun for both new players and for our highly engaged expert players with hundreds or even thousands of hours I, in the game. I, I asked seven. this question earlier. It's like, thousand. are you guys having fun when the game is balanced like this? Yes. And if you guys say no, well, this is not working out. The competitive meta mindset is taking over, right? It's like you either adapt or you die. People that want to play this game casually. I think it's might... also a thing that like, it does not take a, like you can't play, you can't have your cake and eat it too with these two mindsets is that the game is super easy. So it should be played casually, but the game is also super easy. So you should never put any effort to self-reflect or see if I can play the game even slightly better. <laughs> like you can't be both of these people. The game's not that hard, so stop taking it so seriously, but the game's also not that hard, so uh, I shouldn't ever put in effort to get better. If it's not that hard, that should be relatively easy to put in slight effort to not be just a complete drone. But the game's casual, so it's like, you can't be both. You can't have your cake and eat it, too.
if the game is super casual, not that difficult, you should probably, you, it's probably easier for you to have some level of sentience that is to, to, to combat some of the stuff in the game that makes you frustrated. <laughs> you know, that's like, that is the realistic thing. But like, um, yeah, I just don't agree with this. I don't agree with this. Stop playing the game. So what happens if you r run out of people that want to play the game casually? You can't go back to being play how you want because everyone in your community has been converted to the optimal mindset. That's the ultimate dilemma. The more that time passes... On the, the flip side, learning to get better at a game is also really fun. We wouldn't have match reviews every single week if people didn't feel that way. Learning to get better at a game is fun. Not sweating every single game. Not getting a 4K every single game. Not trying to aim for a 4 out every single game. Just casually getting better at a game is fun. It can be entertaining. Wow, I'm getting more 3Ks than I have lately. Well, that feels good. You know, like, that's just... There, I I feel like my chases are really... Are, are starting to get way shorter. Like, I'm actually starting to, like, put... Like, get, get cooler shots on Slinger or these snipe on Huntress that I've always attempted but I've never gotten, like... Improving at a game can be fun too. And like we found out with TCM, if there's like a very hard ceiling to like progression, whether that be in cosmetics, in like, you know, skill, like the game can get boring really quickly. It can get boring really quickly. So I don't, I don't know. Less of a window they have to go casual. And once they reach that horizon of point and no return, then it's just gonna, it's gonna be, I don't know. I mean, bad <laughs> fortnite's the best example you don't think so when you're comparing fortnite is does dead by daylight have a constant flow of new players joining their game all the time or is there a deficit are new players kind of like not trying out dead by daylight behavior seems to be scared to experiment since dvd is their biggest money maker the more licenses they get the more uh that's at stake if their game does poorly, they could lose Ghostface, they could lose Michael Myers, they could lose Imagine Wesker, they could lose RPD as a map. Their investors are a big factor of how much risk they want to take or not. But I think what the developers forget is, is that ingenuity and innovation that made people want to play DVD in the first place. At the end of the day, it's their decision what they want to do with the game. No, so people want to play DVD because it's popular on Twitch and you can play Michael Myers, Freddy, and all the, the popular IPs. That's that's basically it. Like it's it's really just hey, this game's on Twitch a lot. This there's, there's a big like stream culture around this game and there's also it's also IPs. It's the Smash Brothers of, of, of horror. So that that's why. That doesn't mean we should just ignore the game being fun, but like oh. You're definitely a voice of reason amongst the madness going on in the game right now. I made it. I made this has almost nothing to do with the two biggest licenses flopping, by the way. It's still a good conversation, but this has nothing to do with the title. <laughs> it was on like a PTB one time on changes. And people were like, yeah, Coconut, this is so stupid. This is what this other content creator said. And you're you're an idiot. I'm like, I'm an idiot because I like, I didn't word for word say what like your other favorite content creator said. I'm like, no. <laughs> Here's the thing. You got to try to like make your own opinions from your own your own. You know, you want to fix stuff. You need different perspectives from different experiences as well. There's no shame in just thinking for yourself. <laughs> Red alert, free thinker. Why are you not? Red alert, free thinker. Like, why are you not sub to Scott? Why are you not sub? I don't watch any DVD content, dude. Only when my chat tells me to. Hey, it, it's follow. mainly for for content reasons where I need to take care of the, the thoughts going in my brain and going out of my brain so that I know like all my opinions of my own when I make stuff. Yeah, well, it started to sound libertarian. It started uh -oh. to sound libertarian uh -oh. that, that like I do politics. my own research. Be careful. Come to my own conclusions. Be careful. That's not, isn't that just logical? Be careful. It, 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 politics has no nothing to do with this. It's like if I if I like, find out that, that the, the, the baby dinosaur floats on the water, I'm like, look, the baby dinosaur floats on the water. It's like, no, he doesn't. This other guy said it. Like, what? Maybe about? that's our thoughts on the You're line. not what supposed to think for yourself. Okay. Um, yeah. That, that thing, that's yeah, the flops because they didn't perform at, at the same level as Resident Evil, which is one of the most popular video game franchises of all time. Like I said at the beginning of this video, Alien hasn't put out an objectively good film in decades. Chucky as well. Far less decades. <laughs>
This truck case was... Truck case was late 80s, early 90s? Yeah. That's that's why. <laughs> Resident Evil is has stayed consistent the entire time it's been around. Well, that's not true. We had a little bit of a dark age for like four or five years there. But for the most part, has stayed consistent the entire time it's been around and is relevant in the in the past four or five years of existence with incredible remakes and incredible new games. So, yeah, it's a little different. <laughs> Point. Do you ever get bored? Not really. How can you get bored with a community like this? <laughs> oh, I get irritated. I don't know. Every bored? single I guess I'm not bored. Gets asked this That's why I'm getting mad. Most. I'm like, like do you ever excitable. get bored of the game? Right. Well, game well, I love. Game is always fun. Community, I'm like, guys, can you be a little less emotionally volatile and weird, please? Thank you. I think is when people ask that question, they actually feel bored with the game themselves. And the reason why that question's so prevalent within the community or asked as much. Dude, I hate this shit. so right about it. I hate this shit so much. If I even slightly am like salty or unhappy with DB for that day, everybody f***ing points it out. And I'm like, guys, I had one, one, one bad day on the game. One bad hour on the game. And everybody points it out. Everybody's like, wow. Holy, holy sh**. Like, either it's like really consoling. It's like, I'm so sorry you are going through this. Or it's like, well, you know, you're experiencing what we've always dealt with. And it's like, it's normal to have bad experiences with games, even games you like. It's normal. That's fine. People like it. Like he's saying, it's like it's 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 a it's a projection. It's a projection. It's a projection of oh well, I'm upset at the game and I can't handle my shit with the game, so I'm just gonna completely overreact to you even slightly showing any sort of dismay with the video game, and it is just. It's very unhealthy. Projection's not healthy in anything really in life. <laughs> much less this. <laughs> much less this. Dude, I'm probably in one of those, Twisty. And I, 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 just, nobody's ever told me, but I, I'm probably somewhere in some video or something. Good to see you, though. Hopefully your day as well. Four tricksters. That homie f set me off the edge that day. I went against four tricksters, so I, I was going to bully you in the after chat. Like, okay, all right. Yeah, it's like the moment, it's like the floodgates open, right? Like the moment I even slightly don't have a good time, the floodgates open. The floodgates open and suddenly it's just like, it's time to, to, to suck you into the negativity circle and never spit you back out. It's like, <laughs> I'm sorry that I don't have a negative relationship with this game. I used to. I used to be a crybaby killer man who was bitch all the time about literally everything. That used to be me. That's, that used to be my life. But I have not felt that way about this game years at this point. I have a, a fairly healthy relationship with this game. I enjoy it most of the time that I play it. I enjoy streaming to you guys almost every day, four days a week. I do stream five days a week, but I just don't play DVD for one of those. Like, I'm just, I'm not sad and mad anymore. And here's, here's the deal. Here's the deal. I'm just gonna, I'm so, so next to Brian. Come here. Come sit with me. It's almost like people want to prove, prove you wrong about thinking positively again. Yeah. It's not even like I'm thinking positively. I'm just thinking normally. I'm not positive about DVD. The collision. Dog. <laughs> a, there, a lot of their choices in terms of balancing. Dog. We were just talking about that. There's a lot to hate about this game. I never don't say that. I just think there's also a lot to like about the game that you ignore because you're so mad and bent out of shape about the game. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. There's a lot of good and fun to be had that you're ignoring because you're way too negative <laughs> and way too volatile with this game. And it's part of that's just being in the community. There's plenty to hate about this game. You'll hear me rant about it all the time. I'm just also cognizant and recognizing the good things alongside the bad things. So it's like a nice little balance, right? Yes, yeah, salty is fine. I was salty a lot yesterday, but that's okay. Sometimes it happens. It's normal. It's human. But to be salty, 95% of the time you play the game is not normal or healthy. That is weird. Weird. But anyways, like I said, come here. Come here. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to be honest and vulnerable with you guys for a second. Not not too weird. Not too weird. I'm, I'm going to be honest and vulnerable with you guys for a second. I was a very, very, very cringe, very angry, very entitled killer main. And that was like how I came onto the scene in Dead by Daylight. And that's how a lot of people knew me. A lot of you guys that have been here for like the full three and a half year journey going on four this year, which is crazy. 
know that you're like, I've changed a lot since I've been on this platform. A lot, both Twitch and YouTube. I've changed a lot since I've been here. And it's probably really weird for some of you. And I know uh, that's some of you. Oh, most people are probably left. But like, it's really weird to watch me go from a super jaded, super biased, angry, entitled killer main to somebody who's like very loud, but in a funny way, in an excitable way, and not like an angry way. Uh, just making jokes, like vibing. If I'm having discussions about the game, I'm being critical in some places, but positive in others. It's probably a weird switch. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. The reason, and one of the things that I can recognize now as a much more healthier individual, is I had a lot of bad stuff going on both internally and externally. There was a lot of bad stuff that went down in my life in 2020. A lot of bad stuff. 2021, not much greater. And then 2022 was... 2020... Yeah, 2022 is where, like, stuff really hit the fan. Like, really, really hit the fan. There was a lot of bad stuff going on in my life, both external and internal. That was not great. So, yeah, a lot of that came out on the game. And I can bet you a dollar... Bet you a million dollars that I don't have. That a lot of people that... A lot of people that play this game are probably doing the exact same thing right this moment. That's why they're so unhappy. It's just an easy game to scapegoat. There's probably a lot of stuff not going well in people's lives that it's just... DBD's just a good target. Because it's... Because DBD... Isn't a 4v1 asim full of RNG that's not really fair a lot of the time. And that kind of mimics a... A wonderful experience of life in a way that's a little too close for comfort. You try to solo queue, people let you down. It feels bad. It feels bad in a way that's familiar. The game just seems always out to get you, no matter what side you play or what perks you run or what add-ons you bring. It feels, it feels upsetting in a way that's really familiar to how life works. So I think it, I think if you, if you don't have your shit together, and life's getting you down in one way or the other, externally, externally, or internally, or externally. Like, DPD is not a good place to be or a good game to play because it reflects a lot of that back at you. It is not a it is not a game for the faint of like not a game for the faint of heart. Like that sounds really intense. But like, if you don't have your shit together and you have a lot of shit you need to fix, this game's gonna make you sad. It's gonna make you miserable. And you're gonna be mad all the time. And you're gonna become one of those really over-the-top entitled people, whether it be survivor or killer. Because I think it's a game that just accentuates the things that already upset you outside the game. And I think that's why... Oh, this is really... This is a lot for just a video. But I feel like that's the reason everybody secretly hates Dead by Daylight. I really do. I think DBD just in its nature of the kind of game it is, accentuates the things that already upset people about life and friends and people and everything that could upset a person. It's emotional horror, sure. Yeah, we'll start calling it that. It's emotional horror. A horror game, but an emotional horror game. And I think people, I think that's why people take it personally and uh, take it to heart. It's just because there's a lot of stuff not going, not going well. Whether it be inside you, a lot of stuff going on externally, there's probably something in DBD that's going to, like, trigger that, right? But I think that's another reason that a lot of people play it past the point of, of comfort and enjoying it. At least it's familiar, because it's something that, you know... At least it's not life itself actually doing that. It's just a game, even though it kind of feels the same. Help venting a ton of anger when I'm mad at kill against bots and Mori and take it out of bots? Yeah, like, that's... Honestly, that was a lot of the reason I got into Friday the 13th back in the day. I didn't play online very much. I I would go do with bots the exact same thing. Do all the cool the cool finishers and stuff. I feel that I've been there. Not with this game as much, but it was definitely more of a Friday the Thirteenth thing. But venting that anger at other people. That's why you see so many after chats, so many salty videos, so many people being mean to each other out here. Because, well, it, for them, you're right. Just like you, it's a ventilation of their anger, but the difference is you do it on bots and not real people. And you did, certainly don't take it in the after chat. People that play DBD are, I feel like, are, for a large extent, are very unhappy people. And it attracts a certain kind of people that, I don't know, for one reason or another, are like either stuck in their circumstance or are outright unwilling to change their circumstances. And a lot of times it's both. So, I don't know. I think that makes sense, and I think that's 
full deep for Dead by Daylight, but honestly, there's got to be some sort of core. I mean, it's something I've been trying to crack for a long time. It's like, why do people get so upset at this game? Why do people have such unhealthy relationships with this game? And if they're just internalizing and reflecting the the the, the life experience, that will make a lot of sense. Because, like I said, the, the 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 point at which I was the angriest and most unhappy with this game was when I was most like angry and unhappy with life in general. And I feel like a lot of people get into that zone. A lot of people get into that zone. That is true as well. There's a, a smaller player pool, but also like you know, you're also right. Maybe we cracked the code finally. What's happening in this last three seconds? A lot of people are just very bored of the game. Oftentimes, people project their own emotions onto others, and that's. I think I paused and talked for like what, like five, ten minutes, just so this part could happen. <laughs> there you go. So they project their feelings of boredom by asking others to feel a sense of belonging. We don't understand. I think that is so funny. We paused right before that part. <laughs> that those two lads. Yep. There it is. There it is. Yep. Yep. There it is. Come into the communal suffering. I'm not happy outside the game, so I want you to suffer with me. Misery loves company. There you go. It's okay to be bored. If a lot of people are like that, you can't just tell people, like, suck it up. I have this, this, this piece of wood, all right? Now entertain yourself, you peasant. A block of wood is very entertaining. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, that... This, this like I said, that uh, I got it. once again. Mister is just business, and we'll take it from the top. No, don't trust anybody who likes Paramore. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> that's an inside joke. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Anyways. Um. Yeah. Um. Anyways, talking about this. Yeah, I feel like we maybe cracked the code. It's just like DB's just like because of the way that. Uh, life is in terms of listen. I listen. I like Paramore too. It's just it, it's an inside joke. It, it would make sense if I can't explain it. It goes into personal, but it it's funny. I promise. If you like Paramore, it's fine. It's just I just kind of like look at you kind of sideways sometimes. Okay, I get a little scared. <laughs> or a new Paramore? I mean, I mean, I it's a, their their geography in general is really good. Oh, I don't know both question mark, but. I don't know. Like I said, inside joke I can't explain. Hi, yeah, listen. We're, we're explaining the... I can't explain the inside joke. You find it funny, okay? You laugh. I think that inside joke... I think you're the one that came up with that, actually. I think you're the one that said that first, and I've I've carried that ever since. Because I, I was like, that's awkward, but funny as fuck. <laughs> so, I just, I just say that. You know? What was I literally just got here? <laughs> I said... I said... I said if... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> sorry. Oh fuck! Oh, it's so funny. Oh no, we were, we were talking about Dead by Daylight and how it just like kind of reflects the real life experience and all that shit, and that's why people get so mad at like, like Dead by Daylight. And uh, somebody made a reference uh, up here that was like a tire. It was like it's those misery business. We take it from the top. We started like kind of going in it. I was like, don't trust anybody who likes Paramore. <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh that's too good that's too funny and then, like everybody's like wait a minute what are you saying to me <laughs> oh my gosh that's too funny wow you were the first person who said it what do you mean you're the first winner you were the first person to say that to me <laughs> you were the first person to say that to me you can't wow me that's your joke it's okay when you say it what I say is bad Okay, all right, all right. Okay, buddy. All right. Let's part with turn our heads and knock. Ah, ah, ah. The video, though. Life in a lot of ways. Mimics, mimics real life, or <laughs> kind of reminds people of uh, the, the powerlessness of a lot of situations. Um, so I feel like people take it way too personally when stuff happens to Dead by Daylight. Uh, so... Yeah, but the dangers of that, Azrael, is like, like as you said, um, I was talking about yourself, is like, if it's if there's the people on the other end, you got to be careful. 
Or just bots in a video game, like, who cares? But, like, with after chats, with real people, with that real feelings, you gotta be a little bit careful. Yeah, and Dark Souls is a great example, is like, you know, besides the invasions and land PvP and stuff, you're mostly just fighting PvE. You're just like, a boss is not sentient. There's not a person behind that, right? So there's no way to like, take that and internalize that. It's just, it's just a, it's just an AI doing its thing, right? But I feel like people get upset at Dead by Daylight that way. People get upset at Dead by Daylight that way. Because they just don't know how to resolve their own stuff. Or resolve their own issues. Either they can't or they won't willingly the willingness. So like, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get into this. I'm just gonna get into this game, blame everything on the game. And it's the game's fault. And I'm just gonna, you know, like project onto the game. When really, there's other stuff happening. So oh. Yeah, and it's like, and then back in the day, like a lot of the older studies, you know, back in the day, there was mostly single player games, right? Like, we had MMOs and stuff, but a lot of them were not as popular as they are in like the past like 10 years. But you just gotta be careful when you're, you're like in multiplayer spaces with that ventilation of anger thing, you know? It was older or new. <laughs> I mean, I, I like, I, listen, the music is great. The music is great, okay? Music is amazing. Music is great and amazing. Just, you know, just makes me look at you kind of sideways if you're like, I'm a diehard fan, you know? So like, mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or this makes the YouTube, give them a compliment. Give my YouTuber, give the comment, there's a comment. Hi, YouTube. Hello, welcome from the Twitch side of things. Uh, it takes two to tango. As much as I like recording this here on Twitch, you guys are the things that make it possible. And I know a lot of you guys don't cross into here and you don't cross over there, but like you're part of the full picture. There would not be any of this if it weren't for our collective zone together. So thank you for doing your part. Thank you for making it a wonderful and lovely thing that I am privileged to do and have been for years and years. I would not be happier doing anything else. We have raised so much money uh, for charity. Uh, we're still working on that. By the way. I, I, I'm trying to set up for something for February right now, whether that be mid or late, I don't know. Um, but uh, anyways, I we have I have raised more charity, more for charity than I ever have in my life. Even that includes when I was teaching. Um, and I think that even in just in small things that aren't like something like very physical and tangible like that, just like people telling me like, oh, I use your videos to go to sleep. I use your videos to when I drive to work, when I eat food, like that's. That helps. I mean, when people tell me shit like your videos got me through a hard time, like there is nothing more rewarding on this planet that I can think of. And I mean that with my whole chest, with my whole heart. There is nothing more rewarding on this planet than hearing that. And the fact that I can do that for any of you, much less a lot of you, is like, that's literally the dream. That's literally the dream. So thank you for letting me help world be a better place and thank you for letting me help you oh. yeah. that's the best we can be so that 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 is a good capstone right there right there